Hello everyone and welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in the Airbus A320neo. So continuing our real world procedures tutorial series today we are going to be looking at the arrival and descent and how we plan all that. So we're going to have a look at getting the weather for our destination, selecting the runway, selecting the standard arrival route or star. We're going to plan our top of descent and we're going to get the overall picture that we as a pilot want to have in our minds for bringing the aircraft down to uh, finally capturing the ILS or whichever approach we're going to be using at our uh, at our destination airport. So let's head up into the flight deck because as you can see at the moment we're sat quite happily in the cruise so we've got plenty of time now to go into detail as to how we're going to plan our arrival into uh, into Faro in uh, in this case. So here we are on the flight deck and the first thing I would do before looking to start our uh, arrival uh, briefing and planning that would be to get the latest weather at our destination. Now there are two ways you can do this as you've already seen in previous tutorial videos we can get the weather here on the McDo or if you are linking your fly pad up in the company page to your sim brief the username then once you've selected from Simbrief, it'll give you your route details and it'll also give you the weather for your uh, not only your departure but your destination down here. So, as you can see, there is the, uh, the current destination for Faro this morning. And the other way we can do that is, as I say, you can get it from the McDo. Now, I like to get it down here and I'll show you why in a moment. So, if we go to the McDo menu, Atsu, AOC, and we'll just get a weather request. Don't worry about the fact that it doesn't say Gatwick, it's just because of the way I've set this, uh, this aircraft up just for this tutorial video recording. So here is the information that we're going to uh, require, the information from Faro. So let's send that off. So that will uh, that will be now coming. So if we go back to the flight plan, we've currently planned, which we did on the ground in uh, Gatwick. We were planning to arrive on runway 28 and if I just bring that operational flight plan up, we are using the Alagu 4 Kilo arrival. So that information has already been popped in on the ground at, uh, at London Gatwick before we departed. And we do that on the ground. We put all our arrival information there on the ground because that helps the aircraft compute how much fuel it will need to, uh, to make the journey and do all those fuel calculations. By now, the weather information should have come through and it has we've got a company message so let's go back to that McDo menu at to AOC messages received and let's get that meta so there's the meta information for Faro and I'm actually going to print that out just here and this is not only a really cool feature but it's actually about to come in really useful as we are about to see so once that's printed out we can collect the paper and that puts it just here for us. And the reason I like that now is because what we need to go ahead and do is we need to go and put this weather information into the approach phase on our performance page. So if I go to the performance page just there, we're currently in the cruise phase, next phase, descent, and the next phase is the approach. Now, just because I was playing around before starting this video, there is a little bit of information already in here. So normally these fields would be blank and we'd need to fill them in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So as you can see, the QNH is 1015. So I pop that in there. There we go. And the temperature is 14 degrees. That's already keyed in. Now the winds are 050 at 13 knots. Now that should start to ring some alarm bells. Let me just uh, key that in. 050 at 13 knots. We've then got two more things that we need to enter. We need to enter the transition altitude and we need to enter the minimum descent altitude. However, my mind is now being drawn to the fact that the wind is 050 at 13 knots. Well, we are planning to arrive originally here runway 28 so we're going to be flying westbound over from the east but the wind is 050 at 13 knots which means the wind is also blowing from 050 at a rate of 13 knots that is giving us 
quite a strong tailwind. So something tells me that during our flight today, the winds have changed and we actually now want to come in on a different runway. We want to come in on the, uh, the opposite runway. So this happens quite a lot and I also get lots of people asking how do we change the runways, how do we change the approach if something like this happens. So this is a great opportunity for me to explain that. So in terms of changing the runways and changing the approaches, it is actually really rather simple and you do exactly as we would have done on the ground. So if I now go to our flight plan, we'd go back to Faro, back to the arrival, and we would select, we actually want runway 10 now, runway 10, and I always choose the Zulu approach. Zulu is the one most commonly used, you'd only use uh, Yankee if uh, air traffic control were telling us that that was the particular approach in use. So it's the ILS Zulu approach, I'm going to pop in. And then we need to pick a new standard uh, arrival route. So which one do we choose? If you don't have charts, this can be a little bit of trial and error. Now, because I do have a Navigraph subscription, then I can now go through and work out which arrival we want to be using. So in Navigraph, I would select the runway one zero so our arrivals oh hang on there we go we need to select that we're using runway one zero and this now gives us which route we would uh, we would choose so I would be looking as we're coming obviously from the north we'll be coming down here we would want to choose one of these two different arrivals the SOT 4 Kilo or the SOT 6 Charlie arrival routing we could, of course, also choose the USAL 6 Charlie as well, which looks like a rather short standard arrival route. Um, one of the other things we could do is we could also choose the Tupic 6 Charlie as well. Basically, the ones that you want to choose are the ones which are northbound. So this one starts here, comes all the way around, and then lands us back up. Just the same as these ones start up here, come down, and finish just there. You'll notice of course that the standard arrival routes do not take you all the way to the airport. Some do but most of them don't. Most of them will take you to the initial approach fix which is the start of your arrival on the ILS approach into the airport or the RNAV RMP approach depending on which one we're doing but we're planning an ILS approach here in uh, Faro today. The only ones that we couldn't use of these would be this one or this one. We could use them of course but in order to do that we would have to fly over the airfield which makes absolutely no sense and wastes fuel so we don't want to do that. Just to keep things simple for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at popping in the uh, SUT for Kilo arrival as we can see that brings us down here to this waypoint called Venel and if I bring up the charts for that which I'd like to see before I actually program that in so we can open the chart list here's our list of charts and it was the was it the 6 Charlie I've forgotten which one it was let me just show those uh, show those again for runway one zero, uh, sorry, the SOT four kilo. So let's find that one. SOTX four kilo. So if I have a look at that one, there we go. So we can see it begins at SOTX, follow these waypoints here, and finishes at a waypoint called Venel. All right. So if we needed then to change our uh, change our approach. We now know which approach we're going to be using, the SOTX 4 Kilo. We scroll down, find that out, SOTX 4 Kilo. And then it tells us which via do we want to use. Well, they call them vias or vias here in, the, here in the sim. What it's actually asking for is something called the initial approach fix. And as you can see here, we've got the option of Venel just there as we've got Venel just here. Now if I bring up the final arrival chart for runway 1-0, so if we go to the approach, ILS Zulu runway 1-0, and we open that up, 
we can see that we have an initial approach fix here of 450. We also have an initial approach fix here of 451. And we also have an initial approach fix of Venel. So these, you will see, these initial approach fixes or IAFs match up with these vias. And we need to pick which one we would want to use. Well, as this star takes us all the way, as we've already seen on the previous page, to Venel, then Venel would be the one that I chose. Obviously, if you picked another one, it would take you to either this approach fix or this approach fix. But I'm going to stick with, uh, with Venel. As you can see, that finishes just here, this particular arrival route. So I'm now going to go and uh, pop that in. So there we are. And now we're going to insert that. So that has now all been inserted. You can see that our runway has now changed from runway 28 to runway 10. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to check that these final uh, waypoints all match up the charts that I have got in, uh, in my Navigraph. So if I just bring that over here, let's have a look. So we've got SOTEX, which is the very first waypoint. After that, we've got a waypoint FR630. We've then got Usla, just there. And then we have Venol, which is the final approach or the initial approach fix for the start of our ILS arrival. If I then continue to scroll down, we'll see that we've got FR4554, 57, and then finally the runway. And I would expect to see those waypoints on uh, this final approach page just here. So after Venel, there it is, 455, and then it says there's a waypoint called 457 as well. I can't see that on the chart. However, that really doesn't make much difference because by this point, we're going to be intercepted the ILS and we'll be descending down with the localizer and capturing the glide slope. So <coughs> that all looks perfectly coded to me. If I've had to make a change like that, then the next thing I would do is I would want to check that it looks right on my navigation display. So right clicking the Alt key and then selecting the display with the mouse pops that out so I can see here. I'm going to turn off the uh, airports off the EFIS just so I can clean that up. And then just going to bring in the zoom a little bit. And then I want to scroll through my flight plan and check that everything looks as it should. So as I'm scrolling through there, oh, hang on, I need to set that to plan mode. There we go. And let me just zoom in a little bit. So there's SOTEX, which is the start of uh, our approach. And then after SOTEX, we had FR630, USLA, Venel, and then there's those waypoints, which bring us nicely in on the ILS. Now, most of the time, a lot of stars will bring us in to the airport quite neatly to line up and join the ILS just here, as you can see. Sometimes, though, the star will finish in a sort of strange place, and you're going to have to vector yourself in, or if you've got air traffic control online, they will give you vectors to intercept the ILS. Basically, they will tell you what heading to fly. If you haven't got air traffic control or you're flying in the simulator without Microsoft's air traffic control, which I know can sometimes not be uh, not be completely accurate, then all you would need to do is use the selected heading mode and you can bring yourself in to intercept the ILS at, uh, at about a 30 degree angle to the, uh, to the ILS. This approach, however, looks very nicely coded, so we can leave this exactly as it is and we can expect that to intercept the ILS quite nicely. So that is how we would do a, uh, a complete runway change and approach change in, uh, in mid-flight. It's much easier if you do have things like Navigraph because I can look at those charts to work that out. If you're flying online and the uh, runways change, well, air traffic control will tell you obviously which runway to use, and they will also give you the star, the standard arrival route to use. So that's quite handy as well. If you're flying just with default ATC or even no ATC at all, then it is a little bit of trial and error. You can obviously work out which runway to use given on the winds of the airport, but 
factoring and determining which star to use can be a little bit more tricky without the aid of charts and all I would do in that case is I would select the runway that I wanted to use so select the runway ILS 10 Zulu and then all I would do after that is I would start going through selecting a particular arrival route and um, we can see there that looks terrible so not that one I would have to erase that I could then select the next one see what that looks like that also looks like a little bit of a mess so I would erase that uh, and I would essentially just keep going down until I found one that looked like it was a nice approach into the airport and as you can see that one is pretty much almost exactly the same so I could have used uh, used that one as well but I'm going to erase that now because I'm already happy with the one that we are using so that is a little guide on to obviously changing your arrival mid-flight and uh, how to check the coding of things. So now we've actually decided which runway we're going to be using, which star we're going to be using. I'm just going to come back down here, check that all that performance information has been filled in, which we know that it hasn't, because we've still got a transition altitude just here, and we've got a minimum descent altitude to pop in just there. Now again, that information is only usually found on the charts, or from uh, the ATIS, if you have that online, flying on uh, on VATSIM or another online network. So if I come and have a look at the charts here, I can see the transition altitude is 4,000 feet. So let's pop that in. There we go. And then we've got the minimum descent altitude as well. Again, found from the charts. Now, this would be the ILS Zulu runway 10 chart that we'd need for that. Uh, oh, I'm already on that page, that's why I was flicking. Okay, so if I now come down here, I'm going to want to find the minimum descent altitude. So what is the minimum descent altitude? The minimum descent altitude is the lowest altitude you as a pilot are allowed to fly until you can see the runway. If you can't see the runway, by the minimum descent altitude, then you should go around and come in for another approach, hoping, of course, that the clouds, the weather has cleared a little bit for you to come around again and see the runway by the minimum descent altitude. You cannot descend below that altitude if you cannot see the runway. That, of course, is for a manual landing not a full auto land. So you can see here on the McDo we have two options. We have the minimum descent altitude and we have the decision height. Minimum descent altitude is for when you are not doing a full auto land. Well if we look at the weather today we're not going to need to do a full auto land. Visibility is fantastic so about 10 kilometers. There's only a few clouds at 1500 feet so again that's no problem at all so auto land would not be required. If we were doing an auto land, so a Cat 2, Cat 3, Cat 3B, uh, which I uh, explain in uh, different tutorial videos, then we would look to be using the decision height. But we're not going to talk about that today, just because we're not doing a full auto land. And at the time of filming this video, full auto lands in Microsoft Flights in 2020 are not yet available, but they are coming. So another tutorial is to come on that when that becomes available. Minimum descent altitude then, let's have a look at where we get that. So the minimum descent altitude, as you can see, we're making an ILS approach. And it is the large numbers just here, 224. So 200 and 24 feet radio altimeter. What that means is you, we have two uh, ways of getting our height here in the A320. We obviously have a barometric altitude, which is shown just here, telling us that we're currently at flight level 320. And the aircraft has something called a radio altimeter as well, which is a little uh, radar in the back of the aircraft, transmits signals to the ground, they bounce back up, and the aircraft then works out its height above the ground as it's coming in to land. That activates at 2,500 feet. And you will see the radio altimeter displayed down here on your primary flight display as we come in to land. So obviously at this height, 
that is not uh, that is not showing so the minimum descent altitude is 224 feet from the ground using the radio altimeter if you don't have charts again then a good rule of thumb for an auto land is to set your minimum descent altitude to 200 feet now as I do have the charts I can set it exactly to 224 feet so I'm going to do that and then actually just show you so 224 feet that's now in the MDA which means now we've got now the aircraft has that information you will hear those call outs on our descent you'll hear 300 200 100 above minimums and that is the minimum that we are allowed to descend to and that is the aircraft calling out and letting you know one thing I'm going to show you as well the runway elevation here in Faro for runway 10 is 24 feet what was our uh, minimum descent altitude 224 feet so again that's just confirming that 200 feet is uh, a good general rule of thumb if you don't have Navigraph charts and in this case it is exactly 200 feet above our uh, touchdown zone okay so that's the minimum descent altitude of 224 set we know now we're landing on runway 10 and we are using the Sotex 4 kilo arrival so how about our descent when are we going to start descending let's have a look at these charts again so reading right at the top this is for a continuous descent operation CDO what does that mean well that means that the airport wants us to descend continuously from leaving Sotex at a flight level of below 300 or above flight level 190 anywhere between those two altitudes and it wants us as pilots to descend our aircraft continuously all the way down to intercepting the localizer or at least reaching our final approach fix here at Vernal. It does not want us to descend a little bit, cruise along at one level, descend a little bit more and basically do a step down climb. Pilots as well also prefer us to do continuous descent operations because it burns less fuel, it's more fuel efficient to just glide our way all the way from the top of descent down to the airport rather than it is to fly along at a, uh, a level altitude uh, after we've began the descent. And as you can see we actually have flight levels given here so by SOTEX we need to be between these two altitudes and then between these two altitudes, between these two, between these two. So at the moment at the time of filming this video the a320 a Microsoft flight simulator doesn't have vnav vertical navigation if it did then the aircraft would plan this for us all on its own if we go back to our flight plan we can see we actually have uh, sort of constraints in here so fly, flight level 254 flight level 120 and then at Usala 6,500 feet, at Venel 3,000 feet. And if we actually look at those, let me just zoom that back out a second. If we actually look at those and check them against these charts here in, uh, in Navigraph, you can see they actually match up quite nicely. So at Sotex, it's got 245. Yep, that's slap bang between those two altitudes that are, gi uh, that are given. At FR 630, we've got flight level 120. Again, that's between those two flight levels. Usala, it's saying 6,500. That's perfect. And then at Venel, we've got 3,000. Well, that is the lowest that we are allowed to go to. So those constraints are there and they are programmed in. What would be lovely then is if at uh, Sotex, or just before, because I think we're cruising at flight level 320 at the moment. But if we made sure we were at uh, flight level 300 at SOTEX <coughs> and then we knew we needed to be descending all the way down to 3,000 feet, we could s tell our aircraft, we could set in the autopilot 3,000 feet and hit the descent button. And the aircraft would then ma just automatically follow these flight levels all the way down to Venel, making sure it didn't break through any of uh, these constraints. 
unfortunately that doesn't happen quite as well as it should do at the moment in the flight simulator so what we need to do is we need to work this out ourselves to do that fly-by-wire have been really very very handy and on the tablet we now have the on the performance page we have a top of descent calculator so we know that we want to be let's uh, let's have a look at I uh, I tend to use the uh, penultimate waypoint to uh, to target for my uh, top of descent rather than the final one that way if anything is going wrong by this point I've still got a little bit of a margin to uh, correct things just here so I'm going to look at being flight level 50 by Usala so how am I going to work that out? So if I sync our current altitude here in the tablet to what we're actually flying at, you can see there we are, we're at flight level 320. And the target altitude, as I said, is 5,000 feet. So let's pop that in, uh, in here. And I want to descend, probably if I started my descent at, let's have a quick look, we can see there it actually tells us we've got 86 or we'll call that 87 87 miles to the threshold of runway 10 well I need to be uh, 2,000 feet lower than I am now we're at flight level 320 now but we need to be at flight level 300 maximum by SOTIX so let's say that's 87 miles to run so if I started my descent about a hundred miles away from Usala to get us down to flight level five zero. Let's pop that in here. So I want a distance of 100. And I would like to descend at a nice, uh, oh, sorry, let me just pop that back in. So a distance of 100. We are going to start our descent 100 miles away from the Usala waypoint. And we're going to have to descend at a rate of around 1,900 feet per minute. Now that is assuming that we continue on our descent at this speed just here. You can change that manually, uh, but we'll leave that for now. And we're happy to say we're going to be descending at uh, minus 1,900 feet per minute, 100 miles away from Usala. The next thing I want to know then is how close are we to Usala? Well, in the real aircraft, what we could do is on the program page, we can type in that waypoint just here. So, U S A L U, Usalu. What we would then be able to do is pop that into this box just here, and it would then give a bearing and a distance to that waypoint. Unfortunately this is not yet coded in, however I know fly by wire are working on this because I have actually previewed this working um, in, a, in a test flight. So that is coming, so when that does eventually come I will be using that every single flight to know when I am, uh, to know how far away I am from my target waypoint for uh, starting my descent. However at the moment the only way we can do that is to use our range rings here on the navigation display so as we can see we've got 40 miles 80 miles 120 miles and there is Usala and we're actually probably about 110 miles away from Usala just there which means probably in about 10 miles I will want to start that descent of 1,900 feet per minute all the way down to 5,000 feet that would also make sure, of course, that I would be below flight level 300, if you remember, by SOTEX. And I can also turn on these constraints, and that information will start to be displayed just here as well. Now, as you can see, this is where the constraints don't always work in Microsoft Flights in 2020, because that is telling us that at FR630, uh, is that? Can't read it but if I look on here it's saying that that it wants to be at minus or which means below flight level one two zero well if I just check on this 
That is true. It does want us to be below flight level at 120. In fact, it wants us to be below flight level 145, but it does not want us to go below flight level 95. So that wouldn't work. It would, if we left it into uh, manage mode, it would drop us down below flight level 120, but it could also drop us below flight level 95. So that is where in the simulator at the moment, I wouldn't trust it and I would much rather use VS speed, the vertical speed for me to control myself. So we're now probably about 100 miles away from Usalu, as uh, best we can see on there. Uh, if I just use those range rings again, will that come through? Uh, not quite, so we'll leave it, uh, leave it on there. So now I'm going to initiate the top of, uh, top of our descent. So in order to do that, I'm going to roll back the altitude bump to flight level 5-0. I'm then going to pull the altitude bug. I'm then going to pull the VS mode. And as I said, we wanted to initiate 1,900 feet per minute. Let's pull that again. And then we can check on here, VS, 1,900 feet per minute and flight level 050 confirmed down here as well. I'm also going to roll the speed back a little bit. So if I pull the uh, the Mac bug or the speed bug and just roll this back. And what I want to do is roll it back until it targets 270 knots, which is a great speed for descending at. There is a bug here in the simulator at the moment, which tells us we cannot switch to indicated airspeed or not. And that doesn't matter how many times I click that, it will not work until it passes, I think it's something like flight level 250, and then it will flick over to knots and we can target 270 knots. So the way at the moment I've got to just use my eyes to look at the uh, blue triangle there to target 270 knots, so you can see me moving that now. One thing you need to be aware of when in this descent is as we get lower and lower, because the aircraft is targeting a Mach number, as we get lower the speed of sound increases so that max speed will also increase, increase, increase. So I'm going to have to continuously roll that back until flight level 250 when it will flick over into knots and you can hold that. So keep an eye on uh, your engines for spooling up to chase that. Otherwise, your aircraft will get faster and faster and faster and faster and it will knock us off that descent profile that we had just calculated. So now the aircraft is on its way down. I'm just going to have a look at a couple of more things before we finish. So, our actual approach briefing then. We've got the weather and the landing information. We know that the flight management guidance computer is programmed in with our approach into Faro. It's got the correct star, it's got the runway programmed in. We know our landing elevation is 24 feet, as we had from uh, the charts just here. If we have a look at the actual runway, we can see that the runway is its a fairly nice length runway, 2,490 metres in length. However, that is not always the amount of runway that we have got to use to uh, land and stop on. That's found again down here. We can actually see runway 10, 204, sorry, 2,445 metres, which is obviously just a little bit less. And that is just because it's got a very small displaced threshold right at the end there but it's certainly long enough for the aircraft not to require auto brakes so now we're going to have a look at our arrival briefing now in reality the arrival briefing should probably be done before we start our top of descent but just for the sake of this tutorial then uh, we're now going to have a look at this so the arrival briefing we've already talked about how we're going to follow these waypoints all the way down respecting these constraints and we're targeting flight level 50 by Usala, just here. And as you can see, as I'm talking, max speed has increased and that has just started to, uh, to jump up. So I'm going to roll that back. We've actually now gone uh, to around flight level 250. So I can now roll that back to 270 knots and that should hold. If it doesn't, however, because of a sim bug, please, please keep aware of that. Otherwise you'll find yourself off profile and you'll be too high because the aircraft will have sped up in its descent. So let me just come back to our approach briefing. So at the moment we're targeting Usala, flight level 50. After that, we will head to Venel 
of which we want to be at uh, probably around 3,000 feet by then. If I then come and look on the next chart, so the final approach chart, here's Venel. After we uh, hit Venel, we are then going to intercept the ILS and the platform altitude, which is the altitude which it suggests we intercept the ILS at, at uh, FR455, which is just here, is 2,000 feet. Now, in reality, because we'll be coming from Venel at 3,000 feet, by this point, our ILS system will already be engaged and we'll have the glide slope and the localizer shown on the primary flight display. So we will probably intercept the ILS before hitting 2,000 feet, and that is absolutely fine. One of the other things I want to check is the frequency for the ILS is 110.5 and the reason I want to check that is again just because there's a Simbo bug sometimes here in the simulator that the ILS frequency doesn't always automatically populate like it should do so I'm now going to go to the RadNav page and check uh, in this case it has done 110.5 so that's coded in and, uh, and it's all there quite nicely one of the other things it should do as well is uh, the course for uh, the intercept should also be uh, shown on there. And now I'm also checking the minimum safe altitude as well. So as you can see, the minimum safe altitude is shown in this little box just here. As we come into uh, land from the north, the minimum safe altitude is 3,500 feet, then 3,000 feet. And then obviously to the south, where it's over the Mediterranean, it's 1,400 feet. These are values which we need to know, because if we did have a problem with the aircraft, we cannot descend below these values. We can only descend below those values if we are happy and we are on our, uh, on our approach. So the final approach course is 103, which should be able to pop in here, the final approach course. 103, oops, clear that scratch pad. 103. But that's not allowing us to, uh, to pop that in. In fairness, I think that should also populate automatically, but it doesn't. So we'll, uh, we'll leave that for now. And then what I would also look to do, just for uh, situational awareness, really, is there is a VOR at the Faroe Airport, Victor Foxtrot Alpha. I would also look to pop that in. So Victor Foxtrot Alpha, Victor Foxtrot Alpha. Let's pop that in there. And we can see we're 72 miles away. There is another Victor Foxtrot Alpha, which is 3,886 miles away. Clearly, it is not that one that we want. And you can also check those because we've got a frequency there 112 decimal 8. 112 decimal 8. So we know we're going to select the right one just by the distance, really. But you do have a, uh, a frequency to cross reference it against. So let's select that. I can now, if I wish, turn on the VOR information. And that tells us that we're 69 miles away. So we're currently descending, and the aircraft is uh, doing quite nicely, holding 270 knots as well. So that's lovely. We've just passed Sotex. And we're now on uh, that nice descent profile, ensuring that we will be at 5,000 feet by the time we get to... Uh, by the time we get to Us Usalu. The other thing that I would want to check as well as things like the minimum safe altitude, which I spoke about as shown on uh, this chart just here, if you have the Navigraph charts, you can also see them quite clearly marked in brownie beige just here. So as we come down on here, you can see that we've got minimum safe altitude. Really, we don't pass this 3,500, which is fine. We just come into this little uh, this little area here, which is 3,000 feet. Well, that's fine. We're not even be going below 3,000 feet until we've intercepted the ILS course just there. So if I then come up and have a look at the missed approach information. So if we did have to do a go around, hang on, that's the wrong chart, try again. There we are, that was runway 28 that I brought up just there. If we did have to do a missed approach, we need to know this altitude here. So climb straight ahead to 3,000 feet when passing 2,000 feet, turn right towards a waypoint called Gimmel and hold and contact to uh, Faro approach. Now, 
You can see this dashed line here on the chart. That is the missed approach or go around track. Now, normally they would be coded in automatically into your flight computer when selecting the ILS approach. Sadly, at the moment, this doesn't happen in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but we would need to know what the missed approach altitude is because if we had to go around, we'd obviously go uh, toga thrust, go around, and just for workload management, we could then pop on the autopilot, which would automatically climb us to 3,000 feet, so we don't have to think about that. It's, uh, it's already done. So by this point, I would just start to have a look and see what other things I would need to be doing whilst we're on our way down. We would have a look and see, do we need to uh, turn on the terrain radar? Well, perhaps not here in Faro, it's fairly flat. Uh, we could leave the weather radar on, although looking out the window today, the weather's not going to be much, uh, much of an issue. So that's absolutely fine as, uh, as well. But we're now passing, just coming to flight level 130. So I want to get our seatbelt signs on by uh, before 10,000 feet. So I'm going to turn on the seatbelt signs. And at this point, I would run the approach checklist. So I'd want to set, check that uh, a minimum descent altitude had been uh, set. Our engine mode selector is normal. We're not coming through heavy rain, turbulence or icing, anything like that. So that can remain on normal. And the electronic flight bag is, uh, is stowed. The other thing I want to check as well, and this is a lot easier actually if you've got air traffic control online, is what the transition altitude is. So the transition altitude is the altitude which you go from using standard pressure to local pressure or vice versa. The transition altitude is usually found on the charts as we can see here. The transition altitude is 4,000 feet. So on my way down, I want to pop in the local pressure here on the standby, which we said was 1015, the current uh, QNH at Faro. And we wouldn't change it on here until we were going to an altitude below the transition altitude. So at the moment, we're targeting flight level 50. After we have passed, just bring this up and show you, after we have passed Usala, you can see actually it tells us here flight level 80, flight level 50 between those. After we pass Usala, we then want to start descending to an altitude, not a flight level, of 3000 feet. So an altitude uses local pressure, flight level uses standard pressure. So that's why the difference changes there. The transition altitude is 4000 feet, so we go from flight level 50 to altitude 3000 feet. Other than that then now, I'm quite happy with uh, the way our descent is. We've also just passed 10,000 feet so I could pop on the uh, approach lights. The other thing we should do as well, but I've not done because I've been talking, is because we are below 10,000 feet, I would want to roll the speed back because, of course, standard rules really, we don't go faster than 250 knots below 10,000 feet. So I can just use a little bit of ground spoilers as well, just to slow us down. And as you can see, we are now on track to hit Usalu at uh, 5,000 feet. We're actually probably a little bit high on, uh, oh sorry, a little bit low on our profile. So I'm going to just slow that descent rate down a little bit. And in reality, of course, you would monitor that all the way down. So I know that I'm going to be at 5,000 feet far too early at uh, Usalu. In fact, we've not even passed yet. Foxtrot Romeo 630, which again, if I bring this up here, we'd need to be at flight level 950. So, as you can see, we are below that, so we've broken that a little bit. But for the sake of this tutorial, that's okay. There's no air traffic control online anyway. And had I been doing this in a real flight, I of course wouldn't have been explaining lots of things through. I would have purely been monitoring the descent and uh, the descent path and the approach path all the way down so that um, that wouldn't have happened basically. We would have adjusted that uh, rate of uh, descent that we'd calculated over there. Okay, so that is it. This is the final approach. I will see you in the next video where we go over capturing the ILS just here and of course then we will do our landing at Faro. 
thanks for watching everybody and if you've got any questions please leave a comment down below and uh, i'll come back to answer uh, any questions you may have if you've enjoyed the video please do give it a like and a share and also perhaps hit the subscribe button for notifications of more tutorial videos to come and of course all our live uh, live flights as well thanks for watching everybody and i shall see you in the next video bye bye for now